my dear colleagues and friends very good afternoon to everyone i am go uh, i am going to present my case uh, i uh, titled the i titled my case trust not to be too much to appearance i am working as senior consultant cardiologist at united hospital my patient is 55 years old diabetic hypertensive gentleman presented with chronic stable angina for the last 2 or 3 months all investigation result was normal has his diabetes was controlled it was 6.8 hb on c and creatinine was 1 ec showing no significant abnormality echo showing basal inferior segment mildly hypokinetic and ejection fraction was 55% and there was grade 1 mitral regurgitation actually the patient came to my chamber with the uh, cd of angiogram to have my opinion uh, regarding the further management of the patient let's see the angiogram first This is the left atrial right descending. Uh, this is the angiogram of the AP view, showing apparently normal left main artery, left main artery, and LED having uh, lesion on the mid segment around 90 percent. This is the yellow caudal view. Uh, here we find that there is a small uh, uh, dilatation on the distal part of the left main and white shadow extending to the lumen of the left main. the led the and epicrine view showing there is 80 90% uh, lesion in the uh, distal and left and distal and proximal led and uh, uh, left main left main seems to be normal in this views the right coronary artery showing the mid segment 50% lesion and the plb is 100% block and the patient uh, informed me that they have also done ct angiogram outside the hospital outside the country and show me the reports of the ct angiogram ct angiogram report was left main mixed black in uh, in left se severe stenosis led mixed black and non cascaded moderate stenosis in proximal part and more severe in mid to distal part circumflex having no disease right coronary having mild disease 50% in mid segment and distal rc having diffuse disease with analysis of the uh, with analysis of the conventional coronary angiogram and the ct angiogram then i came to a conclusion that the patient having double mesial disease with significant left main disease and uh, recommended for cabg or pca to left main and led but the patient refused to do cabg then i proceed to do ptca with uh, ibus imaging our approach of right radial uh, we take took the xb3 catheter seven branch bmw rs taken and did the ibus and after taking seven branch guiding catheter i again did the angiogram here the left main lesion is very marked which is eccentric plaque uh, on lao caudal view and the ibus ran from distal led to left main artery the ibus run from the distal led to left main distal led and the old led is disease which is eccentric plaque with mixed plaque fibrotic and uh, and there is scattered calcification this is the left main artery left main artery showing a eccentric plaque the interesting finding on the left main that there is disruption of the in intima and my blood passing from intima to the uh, intim uh, to the lesion so what it could be we measured the, the uh, artery size distal left, left main size was uh, mla was 7.7 square meter distal led osteal led was 
and these are measurements and this is the left main this is the left main finding uh, this is intima this is the media this is eccentric plaque or uh, something else here is the disruption of the intima so what could be the relation morphology of this uh, part of the left main artery I, my, there's three thought, uh, there's three differential diagnoses in my mind. One is possible dissection and hematoma, and the ulcerated plaque, and the third one is the eccentric plaque. So the black burden of this segment was 63%. Now we started PTC from distal LED to left main artery, took a balloon of 2.515 NC balloon and dilated sequentially. And we took the stain uh, at for distal 2.75 to 38 millimeter and inflated that part. And the second stain uh, overlapping the first stain uh, from uh, mid LED to distal left main, to mid left main. This is the position of this stain. The stain was 438. We, uh, we dilated, uh, it, it is instant dilatation with 3.5 millimeter balloon on the overlapping segment. And we took 4, 15 millimeter for instant dilatation of the proximal LED and also the left main. This was the result, I think it was good. But there is still a hump on the uh, mid left main artery. So I, I took 4.5, I took 4 millimeter balloon uh, 415 and again in dilate the lesion and uh, and again take the 4.5 to 15 millimeter for proximal for uh, left main part of the stent but after doing the 4.5 there is a indentation on the proximal part and there is a hedginess what it could be to my mind It could be dissection, it could be uh, over dilation of the pro, uh, seg, uh, stain segment, or it could be spasm. Then I again do, do the IVAS run. IVAS run, the uh, distal stain was uh, well opposed and well expanded. Okay, now come to the left main part of the stain. Still all apples and all expanded. Now this is the proximal LED, where eccentric plaque and calcification of the eye. This is left main part. But to me, the uh, the plaque of the left main was not fully covered. There was 20, 30 percent plaque on the left main artery. But uh, one thing is my mind that uh, is there is a spontaneous dissection of the artery, then left, uh, if we uh, keep the uh, plaque uncovered, then there will be chance of again uh, dissection. So I covered the proximal part of the left main stent with another stent. This is uh, 4.5 10 millimeter stent, inflated and after post dilatation. This is the radial after proximal stent implantation. And we remove the uh, oil, and this is this is the final result. So my take-home message is: everyone should be meticulous and careful regarding the previous documents of the patients. After angiogram, every segment of coronary artery should look carefully uh, on different angles. Otherwise, uh, we could miss the eccentric plaque. IVA should be done during left main PCI for optimization of the result. We should also do IVA when there is marked calcification or any there is doubt regarding the morphology of the lesion. And left main intervention is always challenging, but IVA guided optimal stent implantation is the vital part for immediate and long-term results. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.